with his karam, with his mercy, with his blessings. If we see that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the tawfiq to us to do his dhikr, gives us the ability, capability to do his dhikr, whether in the majlis, in a gathering or individually or collectively, when Allah ta'ala gives the tawfiq to anyone to do his dhikr, to remember him, then it's obvious that the kalamat, the verses that are recited, this is with the mercy and blessings that we are able to recite these verses on our tongues because of the glory, the greatness, the power of those verses that we recite and close to Allah and in the eyes of Allah, they are massive. They are massive. They are very great indeed. And the verses that we recite, the dhikr that we recite, this is Allah's mercy. These are the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we recite these verses, there are many rewards and many na'mas and treasures that are hidden from our sight, from our aql, our intellect and brains cannot understand these points. Our understanding cannot reach to that understanding because it looks outwardly that these verses are short and small in weight. But every second of the verses that we recite, we cannot imagine what we are achieving and what those verses are doing for us. Upon this, I remember uh, an event that I would like to present today with regards to the greatness of the dhikr and the verses of dhikr. So we can understand the importance. Because when we do the dhikr of Allah, we recite the same kalimat, hamdiya kalimat, verses praising Allah, or verses of the Qur'an, or the blessed Durood Sharif, uh, and every single kalima, every single verse recitation has its own unique greatness. Uh, this event harks back to the time of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. He was the prophet of the time. And there was an individual who lived at that time of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And he was not a good person. He did, uh, you can say, bad actions, immoral actions in the town that he lived in, in the vicinity, the locality where he lived. And the people around him, his neighbors, they got fed up of him, of his actions, of his mischief. And they did dua that Allah, it's very difficult for us to live with this man. He's pestering us, he's mischievous, his naughty actions, his bad actions. He's a bad neighbor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time, because it was a good generation, they were good people, Allah would listen immediately. Allah listens even now. But Allah would give a response straight away at that time. And Hazrat Musa alayhi salam then received wahi, revelation from Allah. Allah ta'ala said, Musa, a complaint has come from this town. And there's an individual who's very mischievous, impure, immoral. So as we go on this discussion, I'd like to mention this point. There's a learning point that comes out here. Allahu Akbar. That in the society, we should live as good people within society. We shouldn't be mischievous. We shouldn't cause problems. Because we won't cause just problems to ourselves, but people around us will start to dislike us and hate us. And due to our sins, and due to the habits, when the society then becomes aware of the bad habits of a person, the neighbors or friends or contacts, then they may not say something from their mouth or from their tongues, but they emotionally, spiritually, get a lot of pain and difficulty. So we have to be very careful, very careful, especially our neighbors in and around us, who live around us, regardless of what religion they follow or believe in, they have rights upon us and we have to be good towards them. So a person, when he is good, then the people around him, they become happy. And then Allah Ta'ala becomes happy with that person. So that individual, he was immoral, he was bad, and the people in the town did dua to Allah, they got fed up of him. And this is what happens. When a person in the neighborhood is not a good person, everyone gets fed up of him, don't they? And then they start complaining to each other. And in that time, they complain to Allah. Allah, we are fed up of this person. Prepare something for this person. Make a plan for him. And then 
Allah Ta'ala puts adab on that person, isn't it? So, because you are pestering my mankind, my humanity, my, my creation, Allah Ta'ala says. So that individual, the people in the vicinity, they did dua, and then Allah Ta'ala revealed to Musa alayhi salam that Musa, in such a place, in such a town, there's an individual, go and expel him from that area. So, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was the prophet of his time. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam reached to that town and said, who is that man about whom I've been told he's mischievous? And they said, this man. And Hazrat Musa went to him alayhi salam and said, get out from here, please. So he left that town. He moved to another town. But remember, when you get bad habits or habits, it's hard to shun or kick the habits. So he moved to the other town and he started, continued his actions there. Just carried on his old ways, his wicked ways. And the people in that vicinity, they got fed up. They then did dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is this new neighbor of ours who's come? We're fed up with him. He's so impure. Imagine how impure he must have been or immoral or bad if Musa alayhi salam is fed up with him and the vicinity, the people, the neighbors and Allah's given azab and he carries on. He carries on. Because he becomes stubborn. You know when a person becomes stubborn, you can explain Qur'an to that person, read Qur'an to that person, hold the Qur'an in front of that person, beg that person, explain to that person, advise that person, these are sins, leave them. They won't listen. From the next morning, the person will carry on. So this is called stubbornness. Summun bukmun. There's no effect on that kind of person. Isn't it? We see this example around us. And the person doesn't take heed, doesn't learn, doesn't matter how much you tell that person, it's a bad action, don't do this, this is a sin. This is what's happening nowadays, isn't it? In the morning, he'll carry on doing the action, or she'll carry on doing the action, or he'll carry on doing the action. And then it's sad, we feel broken hearted, that we've tried, we've tried to advise, and bring the person by, it's just like water on the bridge, under the bridge. The person doesn't listen. So his situation was the same. He was the Nabi of the time. He was the Prophet, Hazrat Musa a.s. who went to him, this sinful person, but he didn't listen. He moved town, carried on. So he was expelled again. He moved to a new town, and he went there and did his old habits again, practiced his bad habits again. Then Hazrat Musa a.s. was told by Allah to go again, to expel him. Then he went there and expelled him again. Then he reached to the fourth town, to the next locality, to the next village. Again he was stubborn, and he didn't improve. He didn't want to change. He carried on his bad actions. Then the neighborhood complained. Then Hazrat Musa a.s. was sent by Allah. And then Hazrat Musa said to him, Don't you learn? Don't you understand? And he was again expelled from that town. But there was no town left now or vicinity or village to accept him. Imagine how impure he was, how many sins he had. Allah is displeased with him. The Prophet of his time is displeased with him. All the neighborhood is displeased with him. Imagine his actions. He said, Okay, nobody wants to take me in. I might as well go out to the hillsides. And uh, because I can't change my ways, it's difficult for me. So wherever he went, whichever, wherever he used to go, he'd be expelled. So he went towards the mountain sides, he saw a cave, and he sat down in the cave. He thought, okay, let's make a meal out of this. Let's, let's try to make a life out of this. So in the cave, the life's different. Eating, drinking, lifestyle, rough conditions, everything's different. So after a few days, he started to go downhill. He couldn't eat from anywhere, nothing to drink. And his condition became rough and he became ill and there was no cure. There's no medicine. He's lying down in the cave. So he started to cry. He started to cry. At the end, at the extreme, there's only one thing a person can do, isn't it? He said, Allah, he's directly speaking to Allah now. He said, Allah, you took me out of the first town, my town. Then I went to the second village, you took me out of there. Then I was expelled from the other places and you've made my condition such that today if my mum at least was with me, she could ask me, look after me, give me some food, give me some water. My father, if he was with me, he'd take me, cure me at some doctor. My mother is detached from me. My father is detached from me. My children, they're detached from me. My wife, she's not with me anymore. And now I'm totally on my own. I've got no one to look after me, nobody with me. And he's speaking, he's crying to Allah. And then he remembered his sins. Yeah, he, did he, he didn't even think at that time, did he? That I'll do a sin. He said, okay, Allah, it's your choice. It's your choice. Everyone's detached from me now. No one's with me anymore. But please do one favor on me. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. He said this three times. That Allah, don't take me far from your mercy. Don't take me far from your mercy. Subhanallah, imagine what a sinner he was. What was his condition? But he did Allah's dhikr three times. He did this dhikr. He recited this kalma. This is dhikr, isn't it? We recite this, don't we? How many years have we recited this kalma? Many years. Yes, I'll explain. That how much we will have collected, inshallah, please give me a little bit in the hereafter that you've collected. We don't even know. Unconsciously we read, we recite. We don't know what we're saying. Imagine. Imagine. And how easily we recite and forget. 
sometimes seven times, sometimes hundred times, sometimes more than that. We read, read so much and we recite so much that with the fadl of Allah, hairs have gone white. And he in the cave said, Allah, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. That Allah, you've taken me far from any, everyone, my father, my wife, my children, my mother, everyone, my relatives are far from me. But Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, don't take me far from your mercy. That's it. He said these words three times. Allah's rahmah came into being. Allah's mercy is there, but Allah's mercy came to him. Because remember, it's so easy to get Allah on our sides, to get Allah on your side. The mother may not listen, your father may not listen, your friends may not listen, your children may betray you and leave you. But Allah, Allah will never leave us. Doesn't matter how sinful we may be. Look at the condition of that person. What was his hal? But how Allah Ta'ala forgave him with his rahmah. Brothers, if we can recognize Allah properly, if only we try to recognize Allah, if the servant, the creation, we of Allah, understand Allah properly and recognize Allah, then we will loot the treasures in this world and hereafter. Allah is so great. Allah is so beloved and great. Subhanallah. We should give all of our efforts and energy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let at least try to make a connection with Allah, make a friendship with Allah. Allah's rahmah, mercy. Suddenly Allah ta'ala said, Aha, He said, Arham ar mean to me. Suddenly Allah ordered the angel, that you angel, come into the form of his father. So the angel came into the form of his father. Because Allah is Malik and Khalik. Allah said, go and ask for him. So he thought, oh, my father's come. So the angel went to the cave in the form of his father. And he grabbed, he embraced his father, my father. After a while, Allah Ta'ala said to Ahur, go into the form of his mother. Then the Ahur descended in the form of his mother in the cave. He said, subhanAllah, mother's come as well. Oh, subhanAllah. He, be, he was crazy with love and happiness. Then after that, what was left? His wife, Allah gave hukum to another Ahur. Ordered that go and reach there in the form of his wife. Then the wife went there. And the whole family is there in the cave. Mother, father, husband. Sorry, mother, father, mother, wife. And then the children were left. The gulaman of paradise. We know the gulaman. The workers, the beautiful boys, young boys in paradise. Who will mashallah give us drink in paradise. And give us food. And we'll be reclining on our couches, on our seats. Aha. Subhanallah enjoying. And we'll be looking at each other. Oh, kemche. Kemcho. One will be shout to the saruche, saruche. How are you? We'll be calling out to each other. Alhamdulillah. And we'll say, oh, give me food and give me drink. And we'll be playing. Somebody will have a water or a drink. And he'll throw that cup towards the other person. Hey, have this to drink. Hey, you know what? We can't control ourselves. We have to be restricted in the world. But there Allah says, enjoy yourselves. Play, do what you want. Is this Quran? So do we want this or do we want to have the, 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 the punishment in the hereafter? Because it will be forever. Here, take a little bit of tightness for some time and take enjoyment there forever. Forever. This is our choice, isn't it? Our choice. So, father came, mother came, children came, wife came, everyone came. So he was amazed, he was shocked, he was so happy. Allah is merciful, everyone's come to me. He was so happy, so happy. He said, Allah, your mercy special has come to me. And in that state, he passed away. He passed away in that state of passion and extreme love. It was when the Ashi comes into being, the lover, when he realizes the true, the, his existence, his reason. And he said, Allah, you've given me so much everything. And these are the words of the great Ashikin, the lovers. Subhanallah. The people who love Allah, they are like this. He said, Allah, you've given me everything I ever wanted. What can I give to you in return? How can I repay this favor? Allah could not fulfill your rights, your haqq. And at that time he was so in, in much happy. And he, his life, his life went, he passed away. And many events like this we see in the past, in history, that Allah, you've given me everything I could have ever wanted. And your life you gave to me, my life, my life was given to me. And Allah, I give my life, all my energy and my efforts for you. For your sake, Allah. Subhanallah, I could not fulfill your rights, Allah, but all I've got left is my life that I could spend in your way. That I can utilize my energy, my time and efforts for your, for you, Allah. So, imagine this. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam didn't know what was happening. And this is what happens sometimes. You could be lying down in your bed. No one's listening to you. No phone, no telephone, no wires, no code number, no dial code, no connection, no telephone exchange, nothing. When a person wants to create a connection with Allah and directly speaks to Allah, then all of the doors open straight up to the heavens. The exchange is open with the Father of Allah. Direct direct communication nothing is left there's isolation he's lying down in the bed and somebody's sleeping here somebody's sleeping in another room and he's on his own a person he wants to connect to Allah when he says Allah then directly his call goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. heavens you don't need no other means no means of communication just direct speak to Allah and this is the work of the lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ashikeen who are connected to Allah so Allah ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam Allah ta'ala again sent revelation Musa 
Now see the words Allah Ta'ala uses for this individual. How his life was transformed. He said, Musa, Allah said, Musa. And Musa Allah said, yes Allah, order, your order Allah. And Allah said to Musa that in this cave, in this mountain, is my wali who's lying down. And before what did Allah say? He's immoral, he's a mischievous person. Get him out of that town. Get him out of that locality. And he would reveal to Musa Islam and he would then go and explain. But now with love and tenderness, Allah said, Musa, my friend has passed away. Friend, my wali. Imagine the words, my mahbu, my beloved has passed away. Go and look after him. As the Musa Islam was alerted, the where Allah, which cave? In the cave? Your wali? Your beloved? Who can this be? He started to think. Because remember, one lover of Allah, he's thinking that who is this other lover of Allah? And he's querying, he's thinking he loves Allah and Allah loves him so much, he must be beloved to Allah. This person, who can this person be? I must go. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't understand? So we should try to be mahboobs like this, shouldn't we? So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he got up, he said, let me go and see who's this person. I've been given the order. Allah said, go, he's my friend, he's passed away. Give him the ghusl, bathe him and put the kafan around him, the cloth and do his janazah. Bury him. With a nice city, with a nice way, you pray his janazah salam. So imagine how close he was to Allah. Hazrat Musa salam thought that he must be a great person. Hazrat Musa salam went to see him to do his ziyarah. When he got there to the cave and went inside and he saw that person, the same person who previously was the sinner, the most sinful of people. And Musa salam saw him. Hazrat Musa salam said, Allah, he was surprised. Have I come to the wrong place? Is this the wrong cave? Was it another cave you wanted me to go to? Allah Ta'ala replied, Musa, this is the cave. The, who is your beloved Allah? This is my beloved Allah Ta'ala says. Hazrat Musa said, Allah, only up to a few days ago, you're so merciful Allah, so favor, you, favorable you are, that this person, the whole, the people of this area are witness to his sins. And you, you have given him wilayat? He's your friend. In the cave, you brought him to the cave and made him your friend. Ay, ay, subhanallah. There was no announcement, no advertisement, no marketing. Oh, he's Ghoth al-Adam. He's the Wali Vala. You know, today, nowadays, there are adverts and marketing. Even if a person's accepted or not, he says, no, no, I'm the Wali Vala. Write my long title. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. Give me my titles. And he was in a closed cave if Allah Ta'ala wants to give. Then you don't need the clamor and the fame. Allah Ta'ala doesn't announce. You don't need the marketing and the advertisements. Then Allah Ta'ala calls Jibreel alayhi salam who is the greatest angel first he is called Allah says Jibreel in this place in this locality in this vicinity there is a person I have made him my mahboob my beloved Ah, Allah Ta'ala says no this is not enough go to the heavens and announce to all of the heavens that Allah Ta'ala has made this person his beloved and announce in the world to the people to every leaf every leaf every branch every form of creation even if the human beings don't recognize but while he walks the trees recognize him the water recognizes him. The planes recognize him. The boats recognize him. Whatever he travels in, they recognize him as well. Everything. These are waqiyat. They are events. Is it easy to become a friend of Allah? Is it a little thing? One king, if you become his minister, and people say, oh, his minister, protocol, respect, cars, luxury, comfort. Who is this? Why? He's a wazir, minister, and the minister of the state. And he gets all of the fanfare behind him. And what will that give us? Nothing. But the people, they bow their hearts to the person of the world. Allah Akbar, the person who becomes the friend of Allah, and it's announced in the heavens, he's a wali, then the world may not accept, the humans may not recognize, but the creation recognize that person. This is the friendship. As Musa alayhi salam stood up, alert, he said, Allah, it's the same man. Okay. So Allah said, Musa, that you are honest, he was also honest. And the, pro, the, 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 the issue that was here is that he spoke the truth and he spoke to me and he said three times to me, Ya Arham ar Rahimin, Ya Arham ar Rahimin, Ya Arham ar Rahimin. When he said this three times, Allah Ta'ala said, Then I showed him my mercy. Why shouldn't I show him my mercy? Allah Ta'ala said, Why shouldn't I bring my Arham ar Rahimin to him? He is calling to me, he is requesting to me, so why shouldn't I give to him? Allah Ta'ala said, My brothers, what a big learning. Allah is so, so, so extremely. I can't even use the words. I don't even know what words to use. I can stretch my words to the heavens, to Sidratul Muntaha. Drag your words to the heavens as much as you can. Allah is so, so, so merciful that He's allowing us from our tongues to recite His verses, His dhikr. These don't go to waste. These will take the form of a shape, a weight. They will ascend to the heavens. And we become so, so, you can say, stubborn. We have no recognition, no appreciation. Dhikr, what is dhikr? Oh, friends of Allah, what are you saying? Once, three times, he said, Ya Arham Rahimin, his whole life changed and flipped. Our words, our hair has become white. If we recite dhikr, will our life not improve for the better? Will our fortunes not change? <coughs> we should never lack hope. <coughs> never should we lack hope. We should stick to our 
routines, morning and evening, do dhikr of Allah, however we can recite the ism that the name of Allah, doesn't matter if the people of the world like it or not, but keep the dhikr of Allah in your life passionately. We don't understand the value of dhikr brothers, and I've mentioned this event to you, as a learning, to share it as a learning. I don't give lectures and speeches. My brothers, I'm telling the truth. I had no plan to distribute or to share this event today. I put, I had, I had changed my clothes. I was ready to leave home. And suddenly my eyes fell on this kitab, on this book. The books were spread out around me. I had no plan, no plan of what to discuss today. I said, Allah, I'm going. And then my eyes were set forth on this kitab. And I opened the book and I turned the pages and this event came in front of me. Just now, just recently. Before I came, what do you think? That from morning I was preparing, Allah is witness, I'm sitting here in front of you. I didn't prepare, I didn't plan. I was just about to leave, I'm leaving my room. And I will open the door and the books were spread out around me. Subhanallah, According, I couldn't give the tartib the time to read the kitabs. Or you can say I'm a bit lazy, I don't have time. There's a lot of time, but I just sit and be idle sometimes. I'm speaking someone, this person, that person. I spend the time and the time moves. I speak to this person, do this, do this action for this person. So there's a lot of time to waste. But you can say maybe there's a bit of neglect here in the time. So as I was leaving, I looked at the book, the book I saw, and that book was there from a long time. And that book was chosen, selected. I picked up that book, and half of my uh, stride was out of my room, and half was still in the room. I was just about to leave. Allah shan, Allah's glory. And I saw that book when I read this event, and then I opened the book, Bismillah. Straight I came to this page in that event I read, and then I closed the book. I said, Allah subhanahu wa your rahma, your mercy is so great, that you will make the people who come to dhikr today so lucky and fortunate. After today, they will leave dhikr will they how can they leave dhikr today after hearing this event can you leave dhikr of course you can't solid promise subhan in the morning you will come for fajr and the people of this mosque will come to the other masjid for dhikr I can't hear you it's a great action dhikr of Allah this is no journey no travel tomorrow we will cry Allah we thought it was a long journey after fajr there's dhikr it was far for us to go it's too hard for us and we used to they used to recite your kalamat and dhikr we used to think no we'll pray here I'm not going there to do dhikr Allah says oh my servant if you had moved your feet today, you would have seen such a maqam and rank today. Aha, your rank would have been so great. And he said, Allah send me again to the earth so I can earn again. Allah says, no, the time is finished. Now you will regret. So the more we make effort now in our lives, while we are breathing, my husband used to say, the more in this path of Allah of dhikr, you spend your time and effort, Allah will elevate you on every step, on every step. The more you spend your energy, your time, don't look at journey, don't look at distance, don't look at time. Just look at the efforts upon efforts upon efforts that you're making and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the biggest thing. Okay, so now let's recite the same kalamat that I mentioned to you. Just one kalamat. Ya Rahman Rahim, I mentioned the, the greatness of it. So imagine the verses we're going to recite. Uh, uh, that Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kundum in al-dhalameen. And let's think for a second that he was the ummati of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And we are the ummati of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam. Allah ta'ala gave him the reward of being that ummati. And imagine the reward we'll get for being the ummati of Allah's habib. And we'll get the rank and the reward of being the ummati of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So now let's start the dhikr, recite the Rushi.